Okay, so we will continue from last class, right. So we looked at uh, uh, the conventional power sources, right. What are the four types we, f we saw? The first one was hmm? tap, tra tap transformer. So in that we have, we use tapes, is not it? So the, these tapes would regulate the output currents based on the, the primary windings we are selecting, is not it? So suppose if you have a, a transformer, so we will have varying number of tapes in its primary winding. So we based on the switches, so we can select uh, no, uh, uh, the number of windings we want to use to control the voltages across the transformers, okay. So, so you will have a transformer anyway and this transformer is connected to main, is not it? And then you will have an, an output from this transformer is given to a yeah, subsequent to rectifiers to convert the alternating current coming out of the transformer to, uh, 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 to DC, DC direct current and then you will have a, an inductor to regulate the output to the arc. Is not it? So, with that you know we can uh, somehow change the high voltage connections coming from the main uh, to a low voltage and high current which is needed for the arc, right, ignition and subsequently for welding, okay. So, the, the difficulty in this uh, type of conventional transformer is regulation of the output, right. So, for example, in tapped transformer. So, we cannot regulate the output uh, gradually. So, if you switch, if you select one of the switches, obviously each switch would have its own power rating, is not it? Suppose if it has a power rating of 100 amperes and then 10 volts, the next switch will have its own defined power rating. So, you cannot have a values in between, is not it? So, the gradual changing of the output, it is not regulated by this the simple tapped uh, uh, the transformers systems. So, so the, there is some development happened. So, uh, by removing the, 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 the tapes we are we have, uh, by changing that into moving iron, okay. So, we looked at the second uh, power source is moving iron, where uh, you will not, you will not have a tapes anymore in the primary winding, instead you will have a simple iron rod which can be pushed in between the primary and secondary winding of the, the transformer by a motor for example. You can connect a simple motor which can go up and down in the transformer so that you know we can gradually change the, the output current from the, uh, the transformer, right. So, but there are a lot of issues with this because of uh, the heat loss and then mechanical wear and tear that happens and over the time. So, the moving iron transformer is also not energetically efficient because you also heat up, you need, needs a lot of cooling, is not it? So, now uh, if you look at uh, the efficiency of these transformers, they are not that great because you lose a lot of power by converting from one circuit to primary circuit, secondary circuiting, secondary circuit. So, you lose a lot of power. So, people thought about it and then they invented some more modification to the output circuit. So, we will have a current uh, from the transformer coming out as it is based on the transformer power rating and then we can regulate the outputs in the output circuit, is not it? So, then uh, the output circuit uh, uh, came with a uh, uh, regulator in, by keeping a variable inductor, is it? So, the, the, the output circuit from the transformer, so it, it, goes, it goes away and instead of that we will have yeah, something like this. So, now you will have another variable inductor, and you will have arc here, is not it? So, this variable inductor. So, what the, the function of this is to regulate the output current, right. So, we will have uh, the transformer transforming the currents from the mains and subsequently either you can uh, convert the AC alternate current into direct current and then that output current can be regulated by using an variable inductor in the output circuit, right, it is possible. So, that is what we have looked at in the third case in a variable inductor. The inductor is nothing but a choke. 
Okay, so it actually can regulate the uh, the voltage and current coming to the output circuit. Again, there are a lot of problem because uh, then this inductor uh, cannot be operated uh, remotely. So someone should be there, or you need to do it uh, manually, and remote control is not possible if you want to program it, for example. Right? So then uh, people modified the, the variable inductor into a magnetic amplifier. So they replaced the, the simple inductor into a magnetic amplifier where you may have a, a magnetic saturation controlling the output current. Right? So we have uh, replaced uh, with the variable inductor into a magne magnetic amplifier. where you will have a primary and secondary windings same as in a transformer and you will have a saturation coils, saturation uh, magnetic uh, coils which can be the magnetic flux density and max mass magnetization can be regulated based on the DC current because these are electromagnets. The current supply we give, the direct current you supply to these uh, magnetic amplifier. If it is fully saturated that means it will not conduct current, okay, it is saturated. So by getting relationship between the, the, the current field density and the mass magnetization and we can choose the, or we can vary the output based on the, the amount of the mass magnetization the circuit, the, the amplifier undergoes. And this case is very easy for us because we can regulate the current by say for example in this case you know, to controlling to an DC input. So DC input based on the uh, 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 the input, the saturation, the mass magnetization changes. Suppose if you have uh, 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 a magnetic amplifier works in 0 to 10 volts, DC volts. So 10 volts if you are sending, it is fully magnetized. So it reaches reach the saturation magnetization. That means that the output stops, okay. So because it is reached, its saturation magnetization. So recall the, the, the curve, the hysteresis curve we taught in last class, right? So the relationship between magnetic field density, flux density with respect to mass magnetization. The moment you approach saturation, so then uh, there won't be any output coming from the amplifier to the, the circuit. And you can change the mass magnetization based on the input current, what you give from this DC input. Instead of giving 10 volts, you give 8 volts. Then, so obviously the, you will get some output because it is not fully saturated. So by doing so, we can regulate because this is pa the power supply can be regulated such a way that you give a defined volts to saturate the, the magnetic, uh, the, the electromagnets inside the magnetic amplifier, right. So then uh, the regulation is possible. So this kind of conventional power source, if you look at here, the control is very difficult. Okay, the precise control uh, or the, the waveform, what we get it is are all predefined. You can't modify that. For industrial application, so you'll be welding day in day out three shifts, 1.2 mm aluminium in AC alternating current in uh, 80 amperes in 10 volts. So then you can predefine the power source characteristics. You, you make your own power source based on the need with the components what I told. Then it will work day and day night, no problems because you need one current and one voltage for your application, right? So the, for you need a constant current welding in a given voltage. So then this kind of power sources can be tuned for that application and then regular production jobs can go continuously. Suppose if you want to play around the waveform characteristics. So you want to uh, vary the voltage for example during welding, right? You want to do an arc length corrections. That means that you, know, you need to keep the arc length constant irrespective of sample surface. That means that the instantaneous the voltage should be changed, isn't it? Because arc length changes, that means that voltage also changes. But you need to keep the constant, current constant, okay? So those kind of uh, complex waveforms requirement the conventional power source, uh, uh, you know, they lack these features, right? So for uh, predefined power rating, power setting, these conventional power sources are very good. Suppose if you want to modify the waveforms, if you want to change the characteristic of current voltage curves 
as a function of uh, the welding time, then you cannot use the conventional power source. So, thanks to the invention of semiconductors and transistors, rectifiers, and diode based rectifiers, so a lot of development has happened in the welding power source as well to introduce all these semiconductors in the power sources so that this kind of uh, uh, the, the uh, control feedback can be achieved by introducing the semiconductors into the power sources. Okay? So, the modern power sources they moved from the conventional uh, transformer rectifier inverter uh, the, the inductor based power sources into a semiconductor based rectifiers or diode based rectifiers okay? and also the transistor based uh, the waveform regulators. Right? So, the, the next generation power sources from these conventional power sources they started you know uh, uh, the, the power source manufacturers started to use the, the advancement that are happening in semiconductor industry for their own be our benefit to make the power sources. So, for example, in, in most of the welding cases okay, so when you are using an alternating current. Okay, so, it is not advisable to use an, an, an a simple sinusoidal wave. Okay, because this is not a really a efficient waveform to use it in, uh, in, a, in for welding. So, because when you are using it in a such an sinusoidal way, the peak current is, is not reached instantly, but whereas you know, peak current actually gradually increases and reaches. So, this is very bad for arc characteristics, the arc stiffness, is not it? So, when you are achieving, when you are trying to get a peak current, you, know, you should reach it at instantaneously and then maintain it such an, 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 an some value so that you know your arc stabilizes is not it. So, if you have a sinusoidal wave then uh, the arc stability decreases significantly because the E we talked about in the equation it is constantly changing is not it. So, the stability of the arc reduces significantly when you use sinusoidal wave. So, we will have to have some mechanism to make sinusoidal waves into square waves, right? And some applications, the square waves apart from square waves, we may also have a pulsing. For example, you may not use a constant current DC, okay? Instead of that, we may also have a, a pulsed DC a lot of benefits in terms of arc stiffness and arc stability we can achieve by using a, a pulse ray DC current. We will we'll see in this class how it is advantageous. So, if you want to have a pulsing which we know that you know, it can improve the arc stability significantly. So, these kind of complex waveforms cannot be generated by the conventional power sources because what we have it is all electronic and mechanized system which cannot give you the pulsed currents or square wave uh, uh, current or if you want to keep the, uh, 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 the, the current constant over time or the voltage constant over time, it is very difficult with the conventional waveforms. The feedback control is not so not possible. Suppose if you are welding in a, in a complex geometry, say in a wavy surface something like this and you, are, you have an, uh, an, uh, the GTA torch making an arc. Right? Suppose if you are welding, if you are trying to move the, the your, your GTA torch along this direction, then you have a problem with the conventional power source. So, obviously, so this is not a flat surface, is not it? So, this kind of situation can happen if you are using multipass welding in GMAW. So, so if you have multipass welds, so you will have so one pass and the other pass you may be placing like this and you need to weld it if you want to weld it in a constant arc length. So, then you will have to have an, a feedback mechanism where the, 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 the power source can predict immediately the change in voltage, right. Then it can adapt itself so that you maintain in a constant voltage if you want to know constant voltage current in GMW, uh, GTAW. So, this kind of feedback control and adaptation is not possible with conventional power sources. So, therefore, the advancement that we have had in, uh, in power sources by using semiconductors and transistors and microprocessors 
they made our life, the welder's life, and very easy because we can improve the the arc stability. We can we can uh, take a benefit of uh, these advancements in the microprocessor technology. Uh, we can also change the metal transfer characteristics and whirlpool behavior. Therefore, the metallurgical and mechanical properties.